Hey, you guys want to see something cool? Okay, you guys want to see something cool? We are uh, got this street scene, and our adventurer just left the, uh, the tavern, most likely. And we're going to get in our cart. And we zoom out, we see we have a pretty large scene here. It's actually pretty huge. And now it's a scrolling scene. We've got some sounds of our horse clip-clopping. And if you notice what's happening in this scene, you've got the ground that's kind of moving at its speed. And then you've got the trees and overhead. So it's got this nice overhead effect. We're going underneath these banners and things. Those are going at a different speed. And then there's actually a third speed, these tower roofs that are really high up. They're moving just a little bit faster than everything else. And it gives us this nice uh, immersive effect and what we're using is Tile Scroll by Ripper. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you um, how I created this, and how you can create a similar thing if you'd like to. But just to show you other things that you can do with like Monk's Active Tiles, you can speed it up. And now we're going really fast and still the the relative speed is still just slightly different the everything moves the way it should move in kind of reality right so let's slow it down so you don't get too overwhelmed here now what if that street was a little bit dirtier and what if it was like town street maybe it was a dirt road What if there were things on the side of the road, like wagons and things like that, right? Or maybe not. Or what if it was not a road at all? What if it was a canal and the canal had bridges and you could even go under those bridges? We're going to cover a lot of miles today with this. I call this the Endless Road. And it's just a bunch of tiles built to let you do these kinds of scenes and then mix and match the decor that goes around it. Here I've changed to wooden bridges. And maybe I don't want buildings on both sides or on either side for that matter. Maybe I want trees. Maybe I don't want those towers overhead. Maybe they're dead trees or frozen. Or maybe it's a frozen, uh, like a winter scene. Like that. Now we have a frozen town that we're running through. And we can create things like snow effects and we can create additional sounds like winter wintery sounds and of course this it's all really immersive like you can have your bad guys underneath the eaves of trees you know running along I suppose and until, until Ripper gives us a way to make tokens run alongside or, or, or kind of slowly scroll past but this is pretty fun, right? And I've got a working cart with, you know, that actually takes my players with it. It's using the vehicles module. And different types of street settings. But we can even go and get rid of these houses altogether. We could do like frozen, right? Just kind of cycling through these. You get that same immersive effect. Adding bridges if you want to, but now we've got a frozen river.
Cool, right? But there's more than that. Pull out our cart here. Just lots of different forest scenes. You have kind of a lively wood instead of a darker one. Maybe sound of a, an ocean or a, a sound of a, a river flowing. Of course, we need a boat here, but you get the idea. We want our horse to be logging these miles. And you can double up. You can have lots of trees stacked on top of each other or clouds. Mix it up. Make it very... This one just cycles through kind of more rural type paths. Or maybe you need a, a scene in the desert. By the way, to get that horse going again, you just hit play again. It activates all of the sounds and the horse running. This is a horse by Jinker, by the way. These clouds are all just the same effects, just turned off. Or maybe, you know, you want to have, like, um, you know, trees to be around here. You can even darken these, these things. And get rid of the, the weather and everything all together and just have it running, running on a dusty road. Here's a mine with this nice overhead mine tiles right really up in the foreground there. These are great little maps just on their own. Right, You can stop it and we can have a whole battle in these maps, but um, surprising your players and having all of a sudden start moving is pretty fantastic. It doesn't have to be a mine. It can be a flowing lava river, right? And maybe there's some chains and, and maybe this is inside of a forge. Or maybe it's a cave with water flowing through it. There's just a regular cave, right? Just different kinds of overhead tiles to give you a little bit of inspiration on what you could end up building here. Maybe there's bridges here, although I wouldn't recommend a wooden bridge. Here we've got another sewer. This one uses sewer, sewer overhead tiles, but this can also turn into other things. By the way, this sewer can be changed to different colors. I can have it red or blue or really any color of the rainbow that I want. I'll show you how I do that. But maybe we do want to forge as our scene here, right? And I can turn off my water we turn on some ember effects. Maybe I don't want the bridges. We just take them out. Cool, right? It's just a regular dungeon. Maybe we want some of these dungeon spikes overhead instead. And of course, we couldn't have an endless scrolling scene without an ethereal plane, right? Like, how cool is this? I'm going to show you how I did this today. 
and and then I'm going to show you even some circular um, how I use tile scroll how you can use it this will be a really fast tutorial and then I'll show you this one as well All right so we've got a carousel if we walk onto it we can see there's a few pieces we've got some horses everything's all stationary but if we turn it on We turn it on you can see we can actually rotate and our friends are rotating and the little uh, horses are moving up and down We have lights that come on. So I'm going to show you guys how to create things like this using Tile Scroll. It's a really simple module by Ripper. It's a lot of fun, as you can see, and I'm sure you guys will think of some really great stuff. Okay, so back to our main scene. The stuff that you have to know, we'll turn our sound off here. So the stuff you have to know is there's the construction of these is simple. It's just a it's a bunch of tiles that are all stacked on top of each other. And they're all the same exact dimensions. All the images that you see are embedded in the tiles so that the images rotate with everything else. Okay, so back to our town, let's deconstruct what makes the, the core part of this scene work. First of all, you have just a bunch of tiles. They're all the same dimensions. And even though they have objects on them, it's all just a single tile, right? That's way, that way it all rotates together, it scrolls together at the same speed. And there's just a few of those stacked on top of each other. Tile sort is actually a free module by Ripper. I thought it was a paid, but it's a free one. And here we're on the background layer and we can see our cart and we can see our background here. You can even select it. And if we go to our foreground layer, let me just drag this out a little bit. We can see all of the tiles that make up this scene. So it's really just one, two, three, four, five, six tiles. And then the, the, the background tile that scrolls. So let's look at how one of these is configured. We'll go back to our background tile. That's our road here. And you can see its dimensions. It's really wide. Its height is about 1500 pixels. Width is almost 11,000 pixels. I've given it some tags for some of the intelligence. I won't go into a whole bunch of that today. But the stuff that you need to care about is in the animation tab. Now, here we've got some value set. So this one is set to enable scrolling. You can turn it off and it would stop scrolling. And that's what these essentially will, will do. 
and then you need, need to give it a direction. So right now I have it at 180 degrees. So if I put it at zero, it would flow the reverse direction. So it's going to go towards zero. This is 180, and I think it goes maybe this way in a clockwise. Let's find out. See, you can see it now rotates this way. You can see how much it, how much slower it goes. The reason that is is because it's it's scrolling relative to its its uh, length. And that's why I want everything to be the same length, so I can adjust its uh, scrolling speed here. So you can see I've got it at 0.219999. Um, I didn't actually type that in. I think that was calculated after I was experimenting with this, and through some adjustments that that Monk's Active Tiles makes. Now, texture repeat, I think generally just works. Uh, it, it comes default to one. I think it works fine with scrolling this way. It doesn't really matter. But notice if you do like three, it'll start to repeat this. This, this lets you take tiles that are already seamless and um, make them stretch across an entire scene. Uh, this rotation and offsets don't matter unless we enable rotation. So I'll show you those in just a second. Some things to keep in mind also, you can make it flow backwards by putting in a negative number. Like that. And that's it. You go to one of these higher overhead tiles, and you call, see I call this high overhead one, that's these towers at the top. And you can see they're at 0.26. Versus 0.21. You can see it's not a big difference at all. And it gives it that nice subtle effect. If you have tiles that are red, like these house tiles, and that's what this one is, the town. If you select it, and you use the token magic effects color picker, So if I select my town tile, so if I select my town tile, do my color picker. Notice these tiles are colorable. I just removed the colors from them. But if I select them again, and I go to my Token Magic Effects color picker, I can make these any color I want. So I can be rolling through a blue town if my artwork happens to be blue, or green town, or any color I want. Just a little tip in case you didn't know that existed. If you're interested in how I did some of these speed controls, I'll open these up for you. First of all, to stop everything, when a GM clicks it, the control speed is set. Uh, so the, the alter just changes. Uh, so, 
So uh, this just changes the color of the tile here so that I know it's in an uh, off state. Um, the real magic here is setting the scrolling flag. So you can see flags.tile-scroll.enable and then upper S scroll. I'll put these in the comments as well. And if you set that to false, and of course I have it set to anything that has a scrolling tag to it, I'm using the tagger module, right? It will find that and it will set that flag to false. It'll also uh, set some other things like the horse. It'll, it'll deactivate the animation of the horse, right? So that my horse, when he's running, looks like that. And when it stops, it uh, disables the horse sound around him and then it disables the animation of the horse as well. Conversely, this play button does the exact opposite. It takes that same flag, enables scroll, and sets it to true. And then these will affect the, the scroll speed, and it adds plus point. 1, 2 or minus 0. 0.12. That way I can just fast forward as fast as I want and slow it down or stop it altogether. So all of these maps, incidentally, are available on my Patreon as of today. It's November 3rd, 2022. So if you want to get these, you can pick them up on the Patreon now. But let me show you how... Now let's look at this merry-go-round. Turn it off here. Okay, now let's look at this merry-go-round. So the merry-go-round is basically three pieces. It's the top, the horses, they're all one tile, and then it's the bottom. Okay. They all have different settings, but all three of those tiles have speed set. With rotation, you have to set the rotation or turn it off. If you set it, you can set the speed to negative four, which will go clockwise, or positive four, for example, which will go the other way. And you can really set these as fast as you want. Hopefully I don't get you guys sick. Texture repeat is something that you're gonna to wanna to set to zero a lot of the time. Notice if I set it to one, you're seeing the textures repeat and it'll actually default to one. So you're going to need to turn that off if you don't want that to happen. And likewise, you can turn it to 10 and get some really crazy effects. Rotation pivot means that from the, the point in the top left corner, where is the rotation going to happen? In this case, it's happening 50% down and 50 it's happening 50 percent down and 50 percent over it can change that to something like 0.25 and it will skew where this uh, rotates from right if i said that to 0.25 so now it's it's rotating around this point here which is about 25 percent down and over This can be a good effect if you had something that was like swinging over the scene or that, that sort of thing. But you can see it's always bound within the, the limitations of the tile. So there's only so much that you can do currently with that. What offset does is it also just moves the image off to the side. So if you don't want it to rotate in the exact center of this tile, you can just move its offset to different places.
If you're curious how the rest of this stuff works, I'll open up these configs really quick. Just let you take a look at it. In this case, you're going to be manipulating the enable rotate flag. So I'll just stop and let you screenshot this. And then the other one would be disabling that flag. I do have a couple of interesting things going on here. There's uh, these horses, for example, they have a special token magic effects filter that's being applied to them. I call it carousel horses. And this is a modified version of the jump dodge transformation. It essentially makes the horses bounce upside down. And they make them jump upside down or they make them jump up and down but you can't just execute it it's got to be called uh, based on an argument specifically the tag for these horses right or whatever the tag is that's executing this command And the last thing I'll point out is there's actually an, uh, a drawing around here. You can see it's faint line. It's invisible to the players. That's actually a drawing that has vehicles enabled. Vehicles is a module by the same developer as multi-level token, and it's set to automatically capture tokens. Everything set else is set to none. And what that does is it makes these tokens automatically stick to it. Now what I'm doing is I also have a active tile command that is setting this to rotate. So this has got the tag of ride. So it's sent to, uh, and I'll show you the thing that actually activates it is this tile here. It's got some intelligence to it. So when this tile is activated and set to rotate, it will also rotate this little control token by five. And it'll do it every 0.175 seconds. Took me forever to figure out the timing on this. And then it'll trigger itself again so that what it does is it causes a loop. So it causes this to endlessly rotate. It endlessly rotates because attached to it, it's actually a control token and attached to it is this vehicle's drawing. And when the vehicle's drawing rotates, let's see if I can just rotate this manually. I'm just going to take off quick edit mode. So when it rotates, see now my horses are all bouncing up and down. rotates
when it rotates, it takes all of the players with it and it rotates them at the same speed. Now, if you grab a player and you start navigating around, you can do it. It's like walking around on an actual merry-go-round. It's, it's hard to get off. It's kind of actually fun. I could imagine some pretty crazy uh, battles going on here. Um, I don't know how you would execute it, but from just from a, impressing your player's perspective, I think this sounds pretty fun to me. So I hope you guys had fun. I hope this inspired you. Thanks for taking a, a, this long trip with me. Um, I'm really excited about running some campaigns with this Endless Road. And if you guys have ideas for other endless scrolling maps that you'd like me to create, let me know in the comments. Or if you make something cool yourself, stop by my Discord and show it off to all of us tinkerers and inventors over there. Thanks uh, to Ripper for a great, uh, great work on a tile scroll replaces the old Parallaxia, which was awesome, but just was not ever in a state of development that we needed it. Uh, thanks, Monk, for active tiles, for letting us make things super smart and, uh, and everything else here. And for everyone else, hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, have fun making your maps.